Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You are tuned in to Access Miracles. Yes, and um, we're actually really, really excited that our first guest is one of the producers, for lack of a better word, of Living Miracles, uh, Ellen Virtual TV, and her name is Kristen Marcou. So as part of our anchor for our shows, we would like to actually discuss each miracle principle, and there's 50 of them. And today's show is anchored on the first principle of miracles. First principle is, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. They're all the same. And all expressions of love are maximal. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually, I'd like to introduce Kristen from the perspective of how I got to meet her for the first time, which was miraculous. We met at the FIP fundraiser last year, and um, she was actually just supposed to pass by. She was going to help volunteer. And as we were doing function together, cleaning and organizing for the event, um, one day we were in the gathering room waiting for other people to come together because we were going to have a meeting. And um, I was really in this space of just peace and contentment. And as I was waiting, I dropped into a meditative space. And I sat on the love seat waiting just really filled with such love in the silence. And as I happened to look across, Christian with her blue eyes looked at me. And somehow she knew. And I was already in the space of such love and contentment. She stood up from her meditation spot and she climbed into my lap. And I got to hold her and we, I, I can't even explain to you. It was, it was this higher love, this higher love. So when I think about this first principle, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. That to me was, was miraculous that she could see where I was and she joined me in that space and it was just glorious. So, um, you know, since that time, uh, she's done a lot of other things and we've been joining together and coming together for meetings for preparing the show and there's been a lot of healing as well and it's been really profound but I will give the floor to Dan as he asks well no actually let me introduce her now <laughs> we're very honored very grateful to share Kristen Marco and the parable of what it's like before and after community being in here Kristen yeah, thank you for having me. It's a real honor, actually, just to be able to share. And like, there's so much that seems to happen behind the scenes of these shows that, um, like, what you see is just what happens on camera. But there's there's just so much heart and care that goes into it. And that's that was part of my inspiration for just being a part of these shows was to just really, as a way and a reflection of supporting the the vibrancy and the expansion in my own mind is just to really support my brothers and and so yeah I just feel like it's a really amazing time right now and I'm just yeah I'm really honored to be here and just offer whatever is is there that's great okay, so here we go now, Dan <laughs> okay um yeah you came I I was already uh, at La Casa in uh, in Chapala Mexico when you arrived and um i hadn't met you before and i found out um actually that you had been in community and then you had left and then come back and so uh my first question is um what was the 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 impetus for leaving and then coming back and and then uh, and what were the changes that occurred during that time for you yeah thank you it was it was what felt like huge milestones or turning points in my life. So I was with the Living Miracles community just as, you know, the very, the, the very natural way that the spirit drops you into some place that you really love. And 
I was there for about a year and a half and and like I said like there's just so much healing that goes on behind the scenes of these shows and like just every day like it's our life mm -hmm. absolutely every moment where the opportunity is how do I feel and raising up what you can to get back to the clarity and the joy <coughs> and I discovered that I was seemingly being given everything that I was asking for and there was still some kind of block in my mind and when I really got in touch with that I discovered I had these other desires like I I really wanted basically I wanted things that I felt the spirit wasn't offering and it was just my perspective and what the spirit offered as a gentler way for me to start moving through those blocks was to try something else so yeah we we just prayed together a few of us and um just got really clear on what it was that i wanted like it was so beautiful and gentle and from there i i just took a leap of faith and i went from small town camas which is the population of like i don't even know so small and i landed in san francisco and it was just this huge huge um huge change in my life and it just brought up tons of stuff that it gave me an opportunity to to continue looking at the blocks like nothing nothing really changed actually if i'm honest like there's just a feeling in in your heart that when you're part of the shared purpose like this that never changes it's in my mind it just felt like well i i need to go at a, a different pace or something like you know it was just what the spirit offered and it looked different than what i was used to for the last year and a half and um yeah it was i could i could just feel how guided it was because i would I was having these crazy experiences walking around San Francisco feeling pretty shaken up. Like what just happened? Because it was fairly swift as well. Spirit, the spirit just carried me there very swiftly and I'd walk around and I had this commitment idea in mind. Commit, commit, commit. What does that even mean? And, and I discovered that it slowly <laughs> over my time there in San Francisco um, that it was committing to the spirit, like just making a decision to really go for it. It didn't have anything to do with committing to like a, an organization or a job had dropped in for me pretty immediately or anything like that. I was just committing to continue moving in the direction of clarity and peace of mind, full stop. Mm -hmm. And I would have these experiences. I'd walk around San Francisco and there would be this huge sign like engraved in stone on this big building, like commit to something. <laughs> <laughs> it was bizarre. So that was, that was what my journey was um, when I, when I seemingly left and, just went to do some other things. It was really like the spirit just used what it could to reach me because I felt like I was stuck. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just, I had the most amazing miracles too. Like I was, I was there and out and about. And after San Francisco, I was in Hawaii at a place called Kalani for a little while. And then I did some traveling after that, like some road tripping. And the spirit gave me all of these assignments, like like there was still so much communication happening that there's a sameness in the experience of being a living miracles and community and then suddenly being somewhere else. So but yeah, I had these assignments to basically take care of all of my whims, which was so bizarre. Um, so like I got tattoos within the first, like the first few weeks of, of leaving and um, it was given me to travel. I worked for this adventure travel company and um just had these really amazing miracles there because it was the same thing. Like I just heard Jesus very clearly in my mind one day as I was sitting, I was sitting in training at a job and I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Like you give me a job. Like, no, this is, mo I'm moving backwards. Like I had all of these judgments about the way that it looked tons, tons. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I just heard very clearly, like you need to pour your heart into this. Mm -hmm. Like I, it was so clear and I just, that carried me for such a long time. And so I just did that. I mean, my boss at the time was asking me, are you going to commit to this? And so finally I was just like, yes, <laughs> I think I have to. And um, yeah, I, I got to like play out a lot of my whims there too. Like I traveled across the country twice and just met this amazing group of people. And I just, I experienced something like a rolling community. I lived on a bus for 30 days and traveled across the country. And really there's just too many miracles to name. It was so deep and profound. And when do you think you started, when do you think you started actually recognizing that you were hearing spirit? 
as opposed to, oh, this is just a, a, a passing thought, or I know that in my life, I didn't really recognize these intuitive thoughts were from spirit. There were times when it was like, wow, that's, that's pretty strong, but most of the time not. So was this something new for you or did, had you already been experiencing that before you even came into community? It's cool that you say that because I feel like whenever I can look back at any time in my life, if I'm really looking, I will find the places where the spirit tried to reach me mm-hmm. in a song or in uh, uh, somebody like I had um, a mentor from a very young age who was, you know, just like your, your typical old wise man. I'd sit at the back of the room and watch everybody with him. And he would just ask me questions like, is a bird still a bird if it's in a cage? And I'd be like, you know, my mind would just be blown. So I feel like the spirit's always trying to reach us. And it's really just if we're open or not. Yeah. And then just the process, my experience has just been how much more can I allow the spirit to reach me just continuously. Yeah, and I, I just feel to mention that when um, when you arrived at uh, the monastery in Utah, it was remarkable to me because how you just, it's almost, it was so, it's like you landed like a feather and you fit right in with everything that was going on. I, You just felt like you were always there. It was amazing to me, this experience of watching you, like in form, I could see like your body and everything and I didn't see you before when I was there. And then one day you were there and you just felt like you were always there. That was the experience I had of you when you landed in, yeah, during the, the, the time for preparation for the fundraiser. And I thought it was so beautiful. Like for me, the experience was just watching and seeing like, yeah, it's never about the form, is it? It's about the feeling. And I could feel you were always there, but your body wasn't there. It was, it was really remarkable. Yeah, that was part of the gift of me seemingly going away. I got to see the sameness. Like when I was having, I was actually on that bus trip driving through a canyon in Utah. I was sitting on an upside down toolbox in the front of a bus. And I was driving through the canyons of Utah and I just started to cry. Like I just had this massive wash because I could feel like the spirit was in my mind telling me, this is why you had to go. You had to see that it's the same. Like you can experience that feeling wherever you are. So it, it was very important for me. It was a very important time of just like, you know, letting the specialness come up and all the thoughts of like, I can't do what I did there because I'm not there. It was, it was very intense when I was believing those thoughts and, it was some unwinding because there was an attachment to that. And, and then so beautifully, like you just said, Marie, like I did not plan to be at FIP at the monastery any longer than two days. I didn't, I had this feeling like I was going to go there. Like I was traveling closer and closer to Utah. And I was like, I hope, I hope. <laughs> Cause I just felt such love. And like, there's, there's something there, you know, a real, real resonance with what's happening here. So I just had this whim to come back and drop in and see everyone and how can I support. And so I was in the Grand Tetons one night and um, I was planning to go drive clear through to Massachusetts, which is where I was born. And I had some plans there that I was going to carry out. And I, I think I texted Nicholas actually. And I was like, okay, yeah, I think, I think I could be there tomorrow if you need some help. And he just immediately was on the phone. I was like pacing. I was having this huge reaction, <laughs> but um, he was like, yeah, you know, you can come. And I think it was Jason and Susanna called me and they were like, yeah, come and come and support. And I was like, okay, well, I was traveling with somebody else at the time. And he was, you know, we were together and pretty involved in, um, or like what's the words, he was into the teachings enough, not into the course, but into the teachings enough that we could really connect. And so he was like, yeah, you know, I'll try it out. And so we landed there and yeah, it was going to be for two days. And after that, I remember, remember somebody saying, Oh, we're all going to Mexico. And I just, I just broke when I started hearing that, like, I can't leave. What am I doing? Yeah. yeah. Can't leave. It's here. Like, this is where my heart lives right Um, now. Yeah. Well, and it's obvious um, apparently, <clears throat> uh, not long ago, you were walking along the lakefront uh, called the Malikon here in Chapala, and you broke out into a song of Alleluia. Uh, what was <laughs> with that? <laughs> I knew he was going to ask me that, and I still laugh. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, I feel like this time, we're in this really beautiful expansion time and extension, extend, extend is a way of lifting yourself. And I feel very inspired by that lately. That's why my hand went up for these shows initially because it was like, I want to be the I want to be involved in that. That feels amazing. And so, yeah, I was walking along the Malcom with someone else and, and I can't remember how it happened. Actually, I was in conversation. I was walking with Michael and we were just at like this really picturesque spot. And I just started, we were sitting together and I was humming, I think. And he said, Oh, do you want to go sing it? And I was like, no. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and so, I don't know, I just like, I, I, that's such a, a fun, like I keep using this word thrilling. It's so thrilling for me lately to just keep jumping, like mm-hmm. just do it, just do it. So I was like, well, I'll just try it and see what happens. And so there, yeah, there I stood at the edge of the Malacan, like uh, towards the water and just yeah. sang. And I mean, it was, I was like, this after a little bit, like, what just happened? But I love that experience because it, it shows me something David said yesterday, like, it just shows you that you're limitless. Like, you can just keep pushing the edges of where, what you think you're allowed to do or what you think you can do. And yeah. I just feel really inspired by that lately, like the vulnerability and just being really raw. It's like, I just get to continue falling in love with what's happening. Yeah, you know, I think I want to go back and just really, I like when you said that it was very gentle and how you felt called to come in. You felt the guidance also to go out because there were still some things you wanted. And then you came in again when you felt that guidance too. I think that's my experience too. And what I want to share with everyone is that, you know, there's no forcing, there's no anything. You can feel it. It's like a breeze that comes in and, or you can, I don't know. It's like, you can smell it. It's like, it's in there and you just keep following that. Um, I also really am moved when you told me that one of the reasons you felt you had to leave was that you didn't want to believe that this place was special, that this was the only place you could find awakening, that this was the only place you could feel God, hear God, talk to God. I think I want everybody to really get that, that, you know, when you're called to be where you are, you know, God is always there. And the fact that you were so committed that this place, so-called place, be not that special, I I thought, that is so beautiful, Kristen that you did that and you followed the guidance. You didn't get stuck with the form and said, it has to be here. It must be here and it's only here. And then I never knew that parable of what you went through with San Francisco and it just is glorious. And I think that's just, you know, for everyone to really be present to that it is that gentle, it is that beautiful, it is that loving. Yeah, I am. Another thing I noticed about you that um, was, I think for me, an inspiration, was that you seem to be driven by something that is actually an enthusiasm and an inspiration and a, a way of sharing that we all pick up on. And uh, you pass that on to us. And... Um, in particular about the show, about extending like we're doing now. And um, I wondered, is there a, uh, is there anything in particular that, that, that has brought this on in you? Is it a, is an experience that have you always been this enthusiastic about things or is this just (laughs) something that we've inspired in you? (laughs) I don't know if I've always been this enthusiastic. Maybe. Uh, I think it always has lived there. Like I just, like I said, at least lately, like I just feel so, oh, like so, like there's such a fullness and a richness in my heart and just this leaning into it with all of this extension and like just letting it be really raw and vulnerable. Like the miracles have started to build the trust enough that I can, continue and you know take maybe seemingly bigger leaps of faith like we were sitting in a gathering the other night and somebody said peter peter said kristen's got a song and i was like 
what? <laughs> so do you want to come sing it in front of the group? And I was like, yeah, I do. Like, it's just that feeling of like, oh, I'm just going to go for it and yeah. see what happens. And then, cause when I keep doing that, like this is where the enthusiasm comes in. I just like, I feel like I just want to share this with everybody. Cause it's like a roller coaster, right? Like you're, it's like, I don't know, maybe more like skydiving or something, mm -hmm. you know, like not maybe the ups and downs of the roller yeah. coaster, but just like, just do it. Yeah. Just jump. I feel really inspired by that. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, that's my healing and like maybe a shyness and stuff early on in my life, but I just am really inspired by that. And so that's the vibrancy and the expansion. I just, I can't help but share that because it's so, I just want to spread it, you know? Well, is that something spread you can, it everywhere? Is that something you can like encourage our audience to, with? You know, I mean, really. <laughs> Take the leap, whatever this it is, is what you've been we're thinking doing, about right? doing. You've got this life, and we are hearing spirit, and spirit is saying, "Yeah, go for it. Be free." And so, um, it yeah. takes all kinds of different forms, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that that I sat in in a in a place where i was kind of i felt like oh i really needed to extend and, and i did some of that but um yeah i never got up in front of a, a lakefront group of people and went hey listen to this <laughs> no that didn't happen but why not you know this is great i think i think everybody's inspired out here to to do something to move beyond what appear to be limits right yeah that's a really good point i mean you know, because I think everybody has that inspiration inside them and it's that tickle. It's that thing that when you keep doing it, you just feel happier. You just feel like, oh, that's my real self. That that makes me smile or that makes me feel connected or that makes me feel happy. I think that, you know, we don't, nobody can tell us what that is. We just kind of have to keep feeling it. I have been quoting Francis Zhu a lot in terms of, you know, what this journey has been like. How did I end up in community? And your parable, what you just shared, reminds me of it too, Kristen. It's like, you know, you end up here or you end up where you are because you just keep following that inspiration. And you can end up doing what you're doing and being guided to where you are because what happens is that inspiration becomes greater than the fear. And it's really recognizing that inspiration. For you, you heard it. Like, I feel this and I want to follow that. You know, in that joy. Following those little, like, crumbs of joy that's being provided. If, if we're really listening. If we're really allowing ourselves to go and experience it. Right, Kirsten? Yeah, it's really cool, too. Just talking about the leaps of faith. Because I was just, as you're talking, just even sitting here praying into it. It feels... It feels like the, the inspiration and that kind of like, oh, I'm going to jump again, comes from this really quiet place inside. Like it doesn't come from this place of compulsive, like I'm just going to do something for the sake of doing it. It's like somebody will ask or offer just like a suggestion. And then there's this feeling of like, oh, <laughs> okay, let's do this. So I just feel to share that because it's like there's nothing you actually need to do. It's just like being really present with the way that you're feeling and then when a prompt comes in, like just entertaining them. How does that feel? Oh, yeah, it feels kind of good. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that was actually something that just uh, occurred uh, with us the other day. Uh, Marie is, is really very sensitive to that, how do you feel? And, and <clears throat> I actually had the experience where I woke up in the morning and was like, yeah, I don't know, what's going on today? And then it was, she had mentioned, look into your feelings. How do you feel? And as soon as I did that, um, that there was a release and it was very helpful. And I, I trusted that, that, that this is a question that needs to be asked and, and you can listen because spirits, they're talking to us the whole time. I did have another question for you. Fire away. Okay. So can you express how you feel now relative to how you felt a year ago and where you think you'll be in another year. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. 
I feel like it's, hmm, I don't actually know that I can pinpoint years like based on dates and where I was or anything like that, but it's more like, I feel like there's more of an allowance in my mind to let the spirit work with me Mm. and to just be listening and following, following perhaps more swiftly Mm. and yeah, just really moving through the blocks because I'm here in this context with all of us that are really committed to moving through things very swiftly and, you know, like bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. There's even more things happening. Um, So there's more joy and this vibrancy can come through and all of that. So I would say there's a difference in that, but it's not that that wasn't there before either. It's just more like just this, just this continuing of, an opening like a flower that just continues to bloom yeah yeah i hear when you say that i hear it's very musical it's very musical and she's a dance person just so you know so (laughs) i can feel that she that's that's how spirit reaches you it's like this movement Mm. and just trusting that movement so beautiful christian Mm. yeah thank you guys so much thank you thank you thank you and thank you everyone for being with us and uh Bye. Love you guys and being here and accessing the miracles.